What is going on everyone? Chris with Journos Comics and Pop Culture and guys I've been waiting to do this video. I'm so excited to talk about the top key comics to invest in for 2021 and guys this is my picks. So these are my top books that I picked out that I will be hunting. Basically your top Journos Comics key comic want list for 2021 guys. Before we get into this video, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please, please take some time to do so. But I also want to thank our sponsor, the Otis app, for sponsoring this video today. And guys, before we talk about the hot books that I picked out for 2021, we're going to talk a little bit about the Otis app. And I've talked about the Otis app before for those individuals that want to get their hands on a piece of some blue chip key comic books. This could definitely be for you, but you ask, what is Otis? Otis is an alternative investment platform that makes it possible for almost anyone like you and I to invest in shares of cultural assets. You can buy and sell shares of rare and high price collectibles, sneakers, art, and yes, you guessed it, comic books. Of course, that's why I'm here. So how it works, guys, it's, it's really easy to use. All you have to do is download the app from either Apple or the, the uh, Android Play Store. Uh, sign up for free. You can follow weekly drops. You can buy shares of the latest drops directly from Otis or buy shares from past drops from other Otis members. You can then earn potential return by selling your shares to other Otis members or if Otis sells the underlying asset, say for example, a comic book that you have um, you know, assets in, uh, and at that price, in which you bought the shares, if the shares are more valuable, you earn a return. So we're looking at blue chip keys like giant size X-Men number one. You could get $29.50 per share for this book, guys. Um, if you go through the details of each item, it shows, basically it gives you a history and breakdown of the current market value, high sales, low sales, uh, even just historical uh, reference of what the book means, right? Um, Amazing Spider-Man, $129, $24 a share. Uh, you got Tomb of Dracula, uh, number 10, the first appearance of Blade, $20 a share. And again, it breaks it down. Uh, recent sales, it gives any, like, uh, if there's movie spec hype, it'll show uh, recent news. So uh, for, you know, uh, the, the first appearance of Blade, you got the Blade movie coming out, right? We know that's coming from the MCU. So guys, really, really recommend you guys checking out the Otis app. Again, you can download it for free. And if you guys sign up for Otis with the link that I have in the description below, guys, you can get your first share free. So I want to say again, thank you so much to Otis for sponsoring this video. But guys, let's get into these books now. I picked out 13, that's my lucky number, and we're going to start with this book right here. All right, guys, this is X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, number 50. This is the first cover but second appearance of Polaris. So I picked up issue number 49 last year. That's the first appearance of Polaris. Both of these books are really key books to get for the character. This uh, Starenko cover is just so iconic. The values have, of these two books have been very mutual, you know. Um, so, you know, even though this is a second appearance, because it's her first cover and it's such a great cover, it holds high value. I said this before, I'm going to say it again. I absolutely think that Polaris should be brought into the MCU earlier on with the MCU Marvel Studios X-Men. All right, I enjoy the character. I really love the character, and we have not really we have we haven't really seen her in live action. Besides, uh, we saw her in Gifted, the TV show, but that I, I don't really count that. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so I'm going to be on the lookout for this book, guys. CGC nine point four, fair market value five hundred and thirty dollars. Average raw sale one hundred and thirteen. Now, before I get into any more books, let me break down average raw sale. That means. There could be books that are high grade, near mint books that are raw. There could be beat up reader copies that are raw and they're selling for this price, this price and that price. And then you just take the average from all those sales. So this average raw 
doesn't pertain to a specific fair market value for a specific grade of this book, but it still allows you to gauge uh, fair market value. So basically, when I look at an average raw sale, well, I can probably get my hands on a mid grade or a decent, maybe lower mid grade for somewhere around $100. That's what that tells me. All right. So moving forward, guys, counting down number 12 on the list. Prowler, guys. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 78, first appearance of the Prowler. Amazing Spider-Man is my grail run. So I'm always trying to fill holes. I have like every issue from 120 to the end of volume one. All right. So uh, getting these Silver Age books are key, <laughs> play on words. But this is one that I, I don't have yet. And I just, I, I've always enjoyed the Prowler character. I think the Prowler has been under underutilized in the comic books, and I love what they did with them. And, uh, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, I hope they can somehow maybe bring the character back in some way in the second film, maybe from another uh, multiverse. I don't know. but uh, And I also would love to see Donald Glover pick up uh, this role in the MCU. We know we had kind of Easter eggs that uh, his character in Homecoming Possibly uh, being the prowler and, and being the uncle of, he said, a nephew. And that nephew could be Miles Morales. So, definitely been looking out for this one, guys. CGC, 9.4 fair market value, 675 This book is definitely getting up there, though, guys. Average raw sale, $85. So, still, you could probably find a decent mid-grade copy for around $100. Uh, still not, not too bad. All right? Moving on. Oh, and, and I would like to say, I, I do believe that the Prowler uh, was an influential character for Todd McFarlane in his Spawn design. Now, I don't know that for a fact. I'm That's just my hunch. I think that Todd McFarlane took some uh, influence from the Prowler. All right, moving on, guys. All right. Number 11, guys. This is Miss Marvel number 18. And guys, yes, I jumped the gun on this one. I had to do the video. If you guys watched my video that I did showing off the few key books that I got from A1 Comics, I found a copy of this. So you guys, if you're taking notes at home or, or checking off the Journos Comics Want List checklist, go ahead and check this one off the list. This is the first one I got for 2021. I picked up a decent mid-grade copy, maybe a, a 5.0, 5.5. .5. This is the first full appearance of Mystique, guys. CGC 9.4 fair market value, $185, still decently affordable. And again, for just another character that I really enjoy. Average raw sale, $94, guys. I paid $56 for my copy. It's around a 5.5 grade. I can give it a press and get it looking a little nice, but it's got a decent color break increase that I, I don't really see it getting past a 5.5 even with the press, but still... Really happy that I got that book. And I think it's a decent value. I wouldn't say it's like it was undervalued. I say it's probably right there around where, where it's at right now. But I see this book moving for that long term. And also, again, this character, Mystique, even though we saw her a lot in the X-Men Fox franchise, and I thought Jennifer Lawrence's casting was great. But I think this is one that's going to come over and we're going to see almost right away with X-Men because now we could see Rogue, Mystique and, and Carol Danvers in the MCU and how their story arcs cross over, right? As they did in the comic book. So that's what I'm hoping for. So very happy to get this off my list. First one off the list. Yes. <laughs> Moving on, guys, to number 10. Yes, we got some DC guys. This is Batman number 237. Amazing Neil Adams cover. Look, that whole run of the Neil Adams are amazing. But this is the first appearance of the Reaper. This book has been, look, I'm going to talk about it, but let me tell you the numbers first. CGC 9.4, fair market value, $409. Average raw sell, though, $52. You could still find, again, you're probably looking at maybe lower, lower mid-grade uh, copies for, for around that mark, if you can still. But look, here's my thing, and I, I, I've talked about on my channel about... Um, Marvel spec dominating the industry right now, primarily because of their success with the MCU. All right. That doesn't mean that DC books aren't gaining value on the market. And there are those key books that are doing so without movie spec, 
right? And this is one of them. Um, you know, it's just, again, a classic Neil Adams cover. Uh, a really awesome character with the Reaper first appearance. Guys, it doesn't matter if these characters ever show up in a movie or anything like that. This book is going to continue to increase in value for the long term. And that's why I say, look, in, invest in DC. You know, of course, like I always say, though, if you enjoy the characters, if you enjoy the books, and if you're willing to take the investment risk, no matter what, right? So this is definitely one that I want to pick up this year. I mean, there's a few other Batmans that I could have added, but I think this is a, a good one. That's it's you know I'm I'm looking at budget, balancing budget, and and saying this this one can definitely be attainable. All right, guys, number nine, we got Giant Size Chillers featuring the Curse of Dracula, number one. This book is the first appearance of Lilith, who is Dracula's daughter, and. Uh, I, I do believe that's a Busema, uh, Busema cover, uh, uh, if I can remember off the top of my head. But um, guys, this is this got some movie spec. This has got some D MCU spec because we know that the horror genre is coming. Uh, Multiverse of Madness. We know that Blade is coming. And I do believe we're going to see Morbius cross over in, into the MCU. And I do believe that Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige are wanting to go the route of the horror genre and I believe Dracula and Lilith can really play well into a live action film within the MCU so that's why I have this book up here check this out guys CGC 9.4 fair market value $300 average raw sales $17 guys now when I looked into that average raw uh you know this is it's it spans a couple of years so it might be a little bit harder to obtain a copy for under twenty dollars. You're probably definitely looking at really low, lower grade. You know these have the, uh, uh, you know the 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 the, the thick uh, flat spines, and uh, you know finding them in a higher grade is is really tough. I think that's why there's such a huge differentiation between the CGC nine point four and the average raw, because you're looking at probably a lot of uh, defects on these books um, for lower and mid grade copies. So. Still, though, extremely reasonably attainable book that I will be hunting. Moving on, guys, to number eight. And yes, guys, look, if you can't get Werewolf by Night number 32, which, boy, I hope to get one day, go after the next best thing, Werewolf by Night 33. That's the second appearance of Moon Knight. Now, it could be argued that the next best thing is Marvel Spotlight number 28 which ultimately I do believe has a bit of a higher bit of a higher fair market value than this book. It's his first solo story, but still guys, I don't care. This is his second appearance. Hey. CGC 9.4 fair market value $488. Average raw sale 90 bucks, not too shabby guys. And guess what? 33 is my lucky number. Absolutely. We all know Moon Knight's hot, guys, now. We all know that Moon Knight is hot. So you missed the boat on the Moon Knight stuff. But look, if you could find this, if you could find a decent mid-grade of this book for under 100 bucks, I say go for it. Again, with understanding everything else that I always repeat and repeat and repeat. If you're willing to take the risk, if you enjoy the character, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, guys, number eight on the list, Avengers 23. All right, I picked this because not only is it an early King appearance, but it's the first John Ramita Marvel War, guys. He did the inking. It's a curvy cover, but he did the inking, and he did the inking in the book, too. All right, this is also the first appearance of, of uh, Ravona. Uh, but you, you, you take the elements of, of early King and John Romita for me, John Romita being one of my favorite artists, if not the my favorite artist of all time. This is a book I want to get my hands on, guys. Still decently affordable. CGC 9.4 fair market value, $370. Average raw sale, 38 bucks. And again, you're looking at lower grade um, in, in that range. But I, I, I think this one is going to happen sooner than later for me. Uh, this is, uh, I've already been scoping this out and checking it out on eBay and, and, and playing around. Haven't, um, 
you know, uh, pulled the trigger yet, but I'm hoping to real soon. Moving on, guys. Secret Wars number one. All right. So I have like every book in this run except for this book. This is the first appearance of the Beyonder. Now it's not in physical form, but still it's sought after as the first appearance of Beyonder. CGC 9.4, guys. $72. Average raw sale, 25 bucks. This is an extremely affordable book. And I think there's two spec values to this book, guys. One, I think the next big event is going to be Secret Wars. I do. And two, I think the Beyonder is going to play a role. I've said this multiple times. Um, I think that the Secret Wars that we see in the Marvel in Marvel Studios is going to be a mix between the 2015 Secret Wars and the uh, 1984 Secret Wars. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, Doom's Battle World, and I think we're going to have some elements of the Beyonder in there as well. All right. Moving on, guys. We got Silver Surfer number six. And again, this is another one. If you can't get Silver Surfer number three, if you can't get that first appearance of Mephisto, why not go for the next best thing? And this is the second appearance of Mephisto, guys. I am huge on Mephisto right now. I even think we might have seen an Easter egg for Mephisto in the Loki trailer. All right, so... I, I can't really look at, at Silver Surfer number three right now. Out of my price range. But CGC 9.4 fair market value for this book, $420. Average raw sale, $33. And again, uh, you, you got a lot of lower grade books of this copy. It's harder to find uh, the, these uh, these books in, in, in higher grade with the flat spines. And, you know, if, if you can even find one of these that's not completely falling apart for 30 bucks Pooh, man i'd jump on it all day but look if i can even find probably a decent mid-grade for anywhere from i don't know 50 to 75 dollars i think that right now is probably a good deal there's heat under this character under mephisto so you know do what you can that's what i'm going to be doing and again, for me, I always balance out grade and budget. You know, I don't always have to shoot for those high, high grades, but I don't want it to be super beat up. I want to find that nice, happy medium. That's for sure. All right, guys, next on the list, we have some more Wonder Woman, or excuse me, DC action with Wonder Woman number 204. Now, I could easily put uh, number 205 on the list for the second appearance of Nubia, but I put the first appearance of Nubia on this list because I'm going to be hopeful. I'm going to be hopeful that I can uh, obtain this book this year, guys. But this one is getting hot. There's been a lot of spec on it because of Future State. And now there's there's probably going to be spec on it because of the announcement of the third Wonder Woman film installment. And we who knows, we might see a Nubia in that film. CGC 9.4, guys, fair market value, $463. Average raw sale, and this goes to show the steam that's been it's been gaining here. $268, guys. This is going to be a tough one. And, you know, the, the way I look at things, you know, I always talk about uh, having patience, and I stand by that. And so, sometimes having pay, more than not, at least for me, patience is key, and it usually works out in the end. But sometimes patience... Guess what? You end up missing the boat. With that being said, though, I'm willing to take my risk because I'm, I'm not going to jump on something and make a hasteful decision that I'm going to regret, right? Moving on, guys. We have another classic Kirby cover, guys. This is Thor 126, the first Thor issue, obviously con continuing from uh, from Journey, um, just again classic Kirby cover. You got uh, Thor facing off with Hercules. So not only it being the first book that starts the Thor run, and I've been going ham on my Thor run, guys. I mean it's solid. I have like besides issue two twenty nine, I have every issue from like I think one seventy or even maybe 160s to um to the nine to the 1990s like 400 and something right so i've been going real ham on my thor run um to get this book will be freaking awesome and 
I, I do think there's spec value here as well, guys. I think that Hercules is going to show up in the MCU within the next few years. That's just a hunch. And although this is not Hercules' first appearance, again, you got him um, battling with Thor, iconic cover. Um, you know, you, you can't go wrong with it regardless. This is one of those long-term uh, books that I feel is going to be a solid investment over time. And again, I, I probably said this before. I'll say it again. You guys probably see that theme with me. A lot of the stuff I invest in, I look at long term. I really do. Um, it's just like playing the stock market, looking at, well, well do I want to day trade or do I want to be that long term investor where, you know, day trades, they make a career. They make a career out of, you know, buying petty stocks or uh, whatever the case and being able to buy in large lump sums for cheap, but then dump and, and get a profit for the short run. You see that in the comic book industry with some uh, speculators that buy and flip, right? For me, it's not about that. For me, it's really about the long-term investment. All right, moving on, guys. I had to throw this on here. Obviously, this has been a hot book. I, I, I almost got this book at the beginning of 2020, and I should have because it's almost, I mean, it's increased by at least 50 to 60% in value uh, for all grades. Uh, and obviously, this is Uncanny X-Men number 266. Yes, the first full appearance of Gambit. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If they do, uh, that's merely an opinion that goes against fact. Uh, and the fact of the matter is that this is the first full appearance of Gambit. And it's also his first cover appearance. Guys, um, CGC 9.4 fair market value, $141. But I think it's going to be even hard to find that right now. You know, I'm probably going to say you're you're probably going to have a tough time finding a 9.4 CGC for under 150 bucks right now. Um, like I said, it's getting it's getting hot. And you could you could tell by the average raw sell here, $142, guys. You could tell that there's a lot of more raw copies being sold right now, and they're they're picking up steam. Um, I almost pulled the trigger on a 9.0 for, uh, CGC for like 80 bucks back in like March and I didn't and I, I wish I did <laughs> but look I still have it on my list I think Gambit is another character that's going to show up in the MCU um, sooner than later once the X-Men become introduced and I think once that happens if the character's done well this book is going to skyrocket it's going to double the value that it's at right now that's what I believe I do believe though it has chance to cool off you know we we've been in the COVID era here um, and you know, we, we were getting the announcements of the X-Men and if we don't have any, anything, uh, you know, like this year in terms of announcement, I, I, I don't see, uh, this book necessarily holding or gaining right away. I could see some, a little bit of a dip and a little bit of cool off stage, but that's going to be temporary, but that might be a time, especially for me to, to go after when we start seeing a little bit of a dip. So. Moving on, those guys, and this is my last book. This is my number one book on the list. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 50. This is big, big key. Obviously, the first appearance of the Kingpin, guys. Um, this book, boy, I mean, be, here, here's one of those books. It's kind of like ASM 300. Probably not at that level, though, because it's got, you know, iconic cover and a first appearance, but the cover doesn't have the character on it, right? This is an iconic cover, but it doesn't have Kingpin on the cover, but it's still iconic. So you still get an iconic cover and a first appearance, even though it's not of that first appearance, that character that's making the appearance of the book. But for the first appearance of Kingpin, guys, CGC 9.4 fair market value, $8,700. Yep, not happening for me. But just for perspective, I put a fair market value for a CGC 7.5. 717. So if you want to buy a graded book of this copy, or a copy of this book for under a grand, you're probably looking at a 7.5 or below. Average raw sales, $650, guys. So, yep, look, I put this on my list, guys. This is my big book of the year. This is it. Now, again, Spider-Man is my grail run, okay? And even, I've talked about the Spider-Man Silver Age books. Even the run fillers, that don't have necessarily a first appearance. But, I mean, you, we know that the early Spider-Mans are so action-packed. There's so many first appearances, second appearances, cameo appearances. It's it's nuts. But even those that are just fillers, they 
they command a, a, a type of a, a premium for those books and they continue to go up little by little to see that long-term investment, guys. In this book, I don't feel this book is slowing down at all. And you know what else? I know we had D'Onofrio play a good role in the Daredevil show. I think that helped spike this book some over the last few years. But when we see the Kingpin actually in the real MCU, and who knows, it may be D'Onofrio again. I, I loved him. I think they can absolutely bring him back to play the character, uh, even if they retcon the, the, the storyline and whatnot. But guys, this book is going to be through the roof because it, it really already is. I mean, 9.4, 8,700. Um, if we see this character in the MCU done right, again, this is another book that I believe, it, even at the value, I mean, we could see uh, almost immediately, I would guess anywhere around like a 50% increase. And that's just me making a guesstimate gauging the market, um, especially especially for those higher grades, um, because it's a Silver Age book. So for an example, a 9.4 going for 87, uh, I mean, we can easily we get an announcement we can easily see that book go for 12 grand uh with a snap of a finger if if that announcement happens so um i will be on the lookout for it guys fingers crossed and uh you know here's to good luck for myself in 2021 and to you guys as well i want to know what you guys thought of my picks for the year like i said i already check marked one off let me know what's on your guys' 2021 key comic want list and why. Let me know why you're hunting them, guys. I want to know in the comments below. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching the video and sticking around and checking out my picks. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, again, please do so. Again, thank you to Otis for sponsoring the video. Um, and guys, check out all the other links below, official journals, comics, merch. And, and I'm going to give a big shout out, guys. If you aren't a patron to the channel yet, check out my Patreon.com link below as well. You can become a patron for only $3.99 a month, the price of one comic book where you can help support the channel and get awesome extra monthly perks, of course. And I want to give a big shout out to each and every one of you patrons. Simon, Bishner, Jamie, Dan, Sagi, uh, Larissa, Joe, Jason, Peter, Hernani, Pedro, Joshua, Fletch, uh, Frankie's, one, that's one shot, sorry, one shot, I missed the E, one shot comics, Mickey C, I really, really appreciate all the support from each and every one of you guys. Here's to many, many more months and uh, amazing things to come. And we will be having our first Patreon-only contest in February. And in order to uh, be uh, submitted into that context, you have to sign up for my Patreon before January 31st, guys, before the month ends. So with that being said, guys, thank you all. So much for watching. Be well. Keep collecting. And until next time.